Hello there, my fellow exiles. I'm your host, Tim Okulava. And right now, we must talk about an excellent hunting scene. There is only so much that can be raided, and as our band has grown, so too has our demand for the most basic of goods. The need for meat, but more importantly, furs to protect us against the bitter winters here have led to the formation of hunters within our ranks, responsible for doing just that whilst the rest of us raid, recovering. Of course, raid some more. Listening to the reports, it appears that we have a particularly good hunting season this year. A large number of wolf, bear, and elk furs have been secured for our stores and will be distributed among those most deserving of Delvanga's favor within the band. A little competition never hurt anybody, and the rewards make themselves clear in times like these. Out here, a good fur is the difference between life and death, and ah, there he is, Mr. Handsome Oscar Gamer Delvanga. In which we do have a couple comms to go through, but we have six divisions now, and... Our soldiers are slightly disorganized or unorganized, and our officers are content with their Vanga, so... And if you want to about Soviet arms again, please go right ahead. And if you'd like to read about Soviet master again, please go ahead as well. But, we must continue. And which we are trying to get more manpower down here too, so... Uh, really getting more manpower is probably the most important thing right now, so... I like to do that, but it does lower our organization. And we're also doing this one too to get more manpower as well, so... It is what it is. Uh, we'll see how far we can get. Let's go strategy. That's not bad, but let's do Lysenko's promises. In exchange for assault, Lysenko demands much from the brigade. Prisoners who can be put to work in the base or on their back, ooh, or otherwise press into service and have to be handed over unharmed. He's paid us well for them so far, yes, but what else does this madman have hidden away in his labs in the depths of Black Mountain? It's time to find out and see what other items he's been willing to offer. Absolutely. We've got a lot of political power, actually. A lot of political power. So right now, like I said in the end of last episode, we're maxed out on stability, so we don't need that anymore. I kind of don't mind maybe getting more research speed, because our research speed is god-awful. Look at that. Four, 1,500 days, basically. 1,500 days for Strategic Theorem. That is insane. But we do have some comms to go through, which we should address very, very soon. But, I don't know. From their homes to the firing line, we much less professional and organized as part of the army. Oh, now they're loaded to Dilvanga, but now they're disorderly. That is not ideal. I definitely don't like that. Respecting of Dilvanga is very good, though. If that's the case, you know what? If it's already disorderly, can it get even worse? It probably can get worse, right? It can probably get a lot worse. Who will not be able to die with while this decision is active, but is rendered useless after the focus tree is finished. Prepare for the final battle. A show of strength. We need 7,000 or 1,000 there, but... Um, steroids, of course. Request arms. Can I just get men? I just want men. <laughs> Request raiding party movement. Alright, well that's stuff there. Distribute a little more equally, get more war support. I would like to do random executions. I like random executions, but... Spoiled trucks. Or tensions within the band. Our band of merry maniacs is many things, but United is far from one of them. Within our ranks are Germans, Austrian, Poles, Kazakhs, Russians, Ukrainians, and among them criminals, political prisoners, sadists, re rejects, concentration camp prisoners, and lunatics. And that is only a fraction of our composition these days to boot. As it turns out, all these different groups have difficulties getting along, and a number of factions exist within the brigade. We've been aware of these tensions for some time due to the issues they have sometimes caused in the field with the following of orders. But this seems to have boiled over last night. After one too many drinks, two of these factions came to blows massive brawl erupting in the middle of the camp as other groups got involved as well. Curious as to how it would play out. Survival the fittest and all, Dolvanga allowed it to continue to its natural conclusion without his interference by morning. Eight were dead and 23 more injured, but the surviving lead in instigators have been executed for the rules in the brawl and now peace has returned. But this has once again raised the question of what exactly will happen one day when Dolvanga dies and the unifying force of the band is gone. Good to get it out of their system, now back to work, but spoil trucks. I request for alternative forms of payment from Lysenko born fruit. The f first such form, trucks, no doubt taken from the motor pool of the formations that defected alongside him. While the or origin matters little to us, the effect matters much, much more. More trucks means more gold, more grain, more women, oh yes. More everything that can be loaded up and brought back to our camps. Time to find some sleepy village where they can be put to use. We actually have something researched. That's only 133 days. Oh, yeah. And that's using a blueprint, I think, as well, so, yeah. Um, request advisors, yeah, so we get that one, we'll get 3,000 manpower. And spread the joy. You lose the stuff, the soldiers of the brigade will become more happy. It doesn't mean they're getting any more organized, though, so I don't know if it's really worth doing that at all. Um, I don't mind doing that one as well, just because we have so much PP anyways. You might as well get some more infrastructure, right? So, they're disorderly. And that does nothing for us, so... The soldiers of the brigade will be more content. I don't. I never understood, like, why is it content? 
best loot will go to the soldiers. They took the greatest risk and fought on the front lines against their enemies. And their satisfaction is critical to the brigade's stability and enthusiasm. I mean, we can do it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The officers are already pretty content with us, so... Any of this isn't, isn't going to go up. It is what it is, but... Couple comments! Uh, okay, so some of you guys really want me to play a lot of different people, like... You, people want me to try Komi Suslov, Vosnesinski, Social Democrat Italy, Wilson's or Commonwealth of England route, which I actually plan on doing very soon. Reformers Magadon, Tomsk, Orenburg, and more. Just like, there's a lot of paths that people want me to play, so I, I know you guys want me to play a lot of paths, but... We'll get there eventually, it's just going to take time. Things just take a lot of time, especially making thumbnails, but things just take a lot of time, so... Do we lose that? They're loyal, they're just so disorderly. Um, yeah, because of this, this following effects, loyalties to us is good. I mean, we have enough political power, and we're almost close to max out war support, I believe, as well, so... Yeah, okay, well, whatever. Uh, let's read about... Ooh, yes, the think tank. Ah, let's do the think tank. <clears throat> Which is a Ganesian astronaut new play in Old World Blues. Lysenko has given us trucks, guns, and money, so why does he give us back some of what we've been giving him? People! He's got all kinds of scientists hidden away in his labs, and some of them must be less important than the others. Why doesn't he send them to us instead? He'll get more prisoners, and we'll get some eggheads that can move to both perform some field research on prisoners and uh, <clears throat> contribute to our own efforts besides. It's too good of a deal to pass up. We'll make sure Lysenko sees that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love those scientists. <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's see. Someone recommends, actually quite a few of you guys recommend, I do the Cold War Iron Curtain mod, which I've heard like runs kind of laggy, kind of like TNO, but... We'll see. We'll get there eventually. Oh, now they're content. Oh. Well, they're uncontrollable. Um, I mean, we're still trying to make two divisions here, but... We have 4,000. Well, we have... That's not bad. That's not bad. All right, we'll do that one then. Hmm. You know what? I prefer the officers for now, so... How about let's grab you then? Because I want to keep saving some of this manpower, so... Uh, I'm not sure if uncontrollable is good or not. That's probably really bad, but Okay, yeah uh, That's not good man But the riches of the mountain the break brigade continues to hand over valuable prisoners to Lysenko And it's long past time that we remind him how valuable our continued assistance truly is There's more inside the black mountain than he's shared with us so far much much more and we want it a little pressure applied in just the right way should encourage some additional cooperation and payment if Lysenko knows what's good from Anyways, when can we raid again? I want to raid. Secure control, that's worth us for us. Trainer troops, yes. Yeah, that's one's actually... I almost never choose this one, but right now it's super, super important for us to do. Um, I don't want to lower it. We need more manpower, though. Because now they're... You know, if they're uncontrollable... Is that really going to hurt? How much is that going to hurt us? Uh, are uncontrollable. I'm not sure this is going to do anything, so... Slightly unorganized. So, what does that mean? Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, we need more manpower. I could try it again, I guess? I don't know. I'm not sure if the loot thing does anything good for us at all. So, I'm, I really don't understand why we can't loot anymore, but the urges of the mountain. Loot the universe. Les Anko's made the right choice so far, giving us alternative and useful items for our prisoners, and now he's stepping up to normal payments as well. He seems to be learning the brigade is happy to sell, but payment, considerable payment, is both required and expected. The latest such payment has arrived, more rifles and equipment, including heavier ordnance. It's good stuff. Time to go use it. But no artillery pieces. Ah, we re I really want artillery pieces for us. Infrastructure is nice, though. Um, pillage of the land, not worth it at all. Terror is the remedy for resistance. That's not bad, but not worth it at all right now. They're content? Well, now they're well organized. Nice. Um, do we get more manpower? I mean, I like any more manpower. Fire in Orsk. Whilst our band moves around a lot to raid, our main base remains in capture the city of Orsk, which we return to as needed. However, we care far more about loot, slaves, and bloodshed than we do about actually running some miserable city, and so it largely lacks any form of administration. It turns out it's not always to our benefit, however, and the lack of oversight as well as the general piss poor state of Orsk's uh, infrastructure has resulted in a fire. We are not sure how it started, but a number of buildings and lives have been lost to the blaze. Thankfully, the majority of our spoils and slaves have been left intact, but the fires did ravage a section of the factory district, impacting what little industry we have. We'll just have to do more, some more looting then. Sounds good to me. Loot, loot, loot. I just want to raid. I just want to raid people. But loot the universe. This is so sad. I just want to loot. Oh, so now slightly unorganized and kind of discontent, but whatever. Um. Alright, and then let's take a strategy. 
People, it's all Lysenko cares about. Money, he could care less. Territory, he has no use for it. Women? Not in the way we want them, that's for sure. <laughs> now all he wants are lots of people marched to the Black Mountain in chains for use in whatever twisted experiments he has planned. Well, if that's what he wants, that's what he gets, as long as he can pay. If he can, we'll have the same people he wants. And we can have the loot, both from them and him. That's what we want, to the last end. Smoke billowed up towards in the distance, only a few hours walk away by up now. The village was filled with shouting and commotion as the terrified townsfolk gathered everything they could carry and rushed out on the road to safety. Women and children carried precious heirlooms, things carried in their families for decades or even centuries. As their wives and children evacuated, the men were shouting and receiving orders, tossing guns to one another and expecting the weapons they'd be using. Many of the firearms were in a sorry state, not used since the World War and intended only for hunting still. A gun was a gun, and even those with hunting rifles made no complaints. They just loaded their weapons and eyed their meager allocation of ammo nervously. Their stockpile was small enough already, and they saw to make sure they saved one bullet in case of the worst. The men looked grim as they took up their positions. Deep down, they all knew they would not live. This was, barring divine intervention, their final stand. Though they could not save themselves, they could still make time for their families. They wouldn't make sure their own deaths were the slowest possible as, as long as it meant they could aim another shot and pull the trigger again. In the distance, the faintest hum of motors started to be heard. The makeshift militiamen all fell silent. All that could be heard were heavy vehicles and the lone sad song of a solitary bird. The men aimed down their sights and prepared to make their last stand steady and kaboom, baby. Oh, uh, let's see. Some people also said, poor Siegfried. Quite a few guys <laughs> did say, poor, poor Siegfried. Oh. Um, where are we after this? Slightly unorganized? I don't know. I, I might just have to keep doing this one. Yeah, I don't like doing it, but I don't know. By giving them loot, that doesn't make them more organized, though. So we'll see what happens, but loot the universe. And some guy was appointed Prime Minister Talon. Good job. But yeah. Poor, poor Siegfried, our big old bear, but testing our enemies. The brigade is surrounded by enemies, but that also means that we're surrounded by opportunities. The Euroleague, Orenburg, and countless small villages and settlements occupy the lands around us, all rich without, with loot just waiting for us to take it. We must be careful, however, as they are all waiting for us to make a mistake. Therefore, we will first test their strength and see which one of our foes offers the best opportunity. And then and only then, we will ride to plunder, which will look to our neighbors and decide who is most worthy of the honor of our next visit. Hopefully we don't lose. Is it really worth even doing this? And we're doing that, taking forever. How about this stuff? 155 days. I don't know, research speed is usually pretty good. Ah, that's not bad. I like the soft attack, but more 20% more land that I take is pretty decent. I just want to raid, man. I was promised a raiding party. Oh, and also, I converted one of these guys over to you as well, so. Um, we luckily had enough... Well, manpower for a while, but we're still... Well, actually, we're looking really good on everything here. We have some of the motorized, we got some support equipment, we got some anti-tank, we just... I just want artillery! And one of these, or two of these divisions are like this division, but we can't really make them with the aftershock. It was almost uh, something akin to a bombast, a gruesome depiction of heck. Eager tendrils of flame slenderly extended and unfolded into the night sky, clawing to escape the wretched earth from which they had been spawned. The bustling creature on the ground below were projecting a gruesome shady play onto the salted pastures outside the brightly burning village. The former crack SS troopers and the ruthless Russian bands were now sorry after image of their former fear and awe-inspiring power. Yet still retained their gruesome rejection of any normal moral standards. Not a single poor soul had been left alive after the bandit plague had washed over the small rural community in the search for a suitable place to face their downfall. Some of the numbers had deserted, others had been executed, and now that all that remained were the most determined and steadfast killers that the brigade could offer. Despite this, the men gathering in the strategically untouched village square began to have their first doubts over the outcome of tomorrow's battle. The numbers had been thinned to an extent worse than at any other time during the rapacious rampage through the Russian plains. Even at full strength, the intense ferocity of their per pursuers would have resulted in a Pyrrhic bloodbath, but now it might just end up being a one-sided massacre. Yet, they prepared for the doom anyway. Ex escaping fate was not an option for these darn souls any longer. Where to go now? Die. Um, actually, can we do this? I want to get some engineering equipment. I think that'd be really good. Yeah, let's do that. We have a North Army XP. I wish I could throw these guys on here, too. Get the engineers on there. Those guys are really useful. Um, I'd like to use these guys, but we just don't have the stuff for them, so... All right, testing our enemies. So, let's address the question in the room. Now, at the end of last episode, I asked you guys whether we should strike Orenburg, strike at the peasantry, or strike the Urals. And overall, there is more support for 
strike at the Urals. The Ural League, our most vicious or vigorous enemy. As much as we hate their pathetic mongrel state, we cannot deny that our militias or their militias are effective and their communities well protected. On several occasions in the past, they've even defeated us and this is causing us trouble. We must prove that they are not capable of defending their territory and that they, like everyone else, falls before us. We must put them in their place, and we will. We shall launch a daring raid against the Ural League, which I'll give to the best. Uh, we lose war support, political power, stability. Uh, where are we at with this stuff? They are... Okay. Heavily favor the officers? Why not? Uh, oh, we actually have stuff here. Okay, yeah, we've done all this stuff. Nice. The Black Mountain acts as a natural barrier to our raiding efforts. But with Lysenko's blessing, we will be able to travel through Mag Magnikorsk and into the untouched lands beyond. The plunder from such efforts will no doubt be considerable. There's a 20% chance we lose a thousand manpower, which is fine with us for right now. Um, that's not bad. 10% chance nothing happens. We get some basic infantry equipment, joint training missions, we get some army XP and more war support. I think that's worth it. Lysenko's NKVD men are trained military officers. They may be chained to the Black Mountain, but we are not, and they, we can use our agreement with Lysenko to access their experts and training facility and capacity. That's not bad either. Lysenko's trained military theorists under his command. He should loan some of them to us. We'll ask him to do so and request arms. Well, we don't need that one. But the Black Mountain has massive stockpiles of surplus weapons. Our agreement with Lysenko allows us the opportunity to secure some of them for use. We should do so. Um, give to the best. Sure, officers get some stuff. Secure control. Anything up here? Not really. Not that we really care about. Consumer goods would be nice, but... All we have are roads to build. So. And... I mean, it was actually really close between Orenburg and EuroLeague, but... It, so, so be it. Uh, so, someone else recommends I do Tiano Goring. Um, I'll be honest, like, I'm actually planning that for the month of July uh, 2021, so we'll get there eventually. The Verona Conference ends. An interesting development from Italia, and we get more political power, which is nice. Even though political power is not an issue right now. It's always manpower. Infrastructure, thank you. Um, anything else? Request raiding party movements. Request arms. I'm gonna guess. This should be loot more equally. Sure, why not? It, it doesn't seem like there's any sort of penalty to not do that, so... I don't mind getting guns, but... It doesn't seem like it's really worth it for 100 PP. It really doesn't seem like it's very much worth it, but... Oh, sure, why not? We'll get more manpower. If we possibly can. Effects is not bad. T but testing your enemies. The efforts of Delvanga and the brigade's senior officers to prepare for the next major raid have been successful. Equipment has been prepared, plans have been drawn, and the men have been made ready. With a deliberate encouragement of internal disagreements in order to provoke a ver ferocity and a desire for blood. The only question is where to strike, and the three options have been have uh, been presented for consideration. The first and most ambitious would be to strike the lands around Orenburg, trusting in surprise and skill to overcome their defenses and shatter their illusion of strength. The second and more obvious target would be the Euroleague affiliated settlements. We fight the League on a near constant basis, and targeting their morale and resources would be of great help in the future. Finally, and as the third option, Lysenko was informed that his forces would not interfere were we to launch a raid against peasant communities within his territory. Likely believing it an opportunity to acquire desired prisoners without inciting unrest against himself, they would be unlikely to offer any resistance, but it's unclear if there would be any would be all that much to gain from them. Regardless, however the decision must be made, we must we choose who will fall. Hopefully, and just in case, I'm going to make a save real quick anyways. Hey, look, a USA save. Um, by the time this video comes out, you'll see, you'll know which USA I'm playing for that campaign. And... Magnitogorsk. Euroleague, I don't want to do this one, but you guys voted for this one overall. I don't want to find it here, because it's mountains. It's so bad. And it's kind of over a river as well. So actually, you know what? I'm going to make sure that We'll try the best we can. You're going to come over here and get the militia on this side, too. I want to put our best soldiers at the forefront. So, all the infantry here, go into here. These guys come over here, too. So, we should do okay. But, mm, you never know. Advisors? Yeah, land auction is fine. Uh, get more army speed so we can get more land auction quicker. And nothing else there. Cool. And someone said, actually, at the time of this recording, back in the day when TNO first came out, some of these focuses actually might have been reworked to be a little bit less edgy. So this might be a reworked focus tree or just slightly edited. I don't know exactly, but that's what at least some of you guys did say, um, that the devs might have made it a little bit less gamer-like. Well, give it to the best, my friends. Give it to the best. Hmm. So now they're unhappy with us. That sucks. Purgy Officer Corps. Oh, well, that's not good for four months. Um, that's not good. Out of supply. Um, yeah, and also someone did say, like, I wonder how this is going to end. Oh, do we have... Oh, four divisions of infantry. Someone did say that they wonder how this is all going to turn out. Me too. How is... Don't think I'm maybe going to die. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me now? Finally? Now we're disorganized? God dang it. 
struck at the Euro League. The Alvanga has decided that the Brigade relies on rides on the Euro League. The League has long been our most committed enemy, and many of our men have lost comrades to them at one time or another. They need good enthusiasm for any action taken to bring them harm. Harm that is soon to come, and as our scouts have identified an excellent target. An occupied prison that the Euro Guard uses for training new militia recruits and methods of village defense. Though the Guard always fights with determination, and the instructors and senior cadres present at the present will no doubt be so in even greater fashion, the opportunity cannot be ignored. By killing the recruits, we will not only strike at the morale of the rank and file, but may dissuade others from joining them. In addition, our own men will provide and both acquire excellent combat experience as well as improving their techniques for attacking league fortifications and installations. The raid will commence soon to victory. We're breaking into a prison? Yes, we are. Grab the healthy, fit, and strong. We raid for wealth, entertainment, and many other reasons, but one of the most valuable things we find is flesh. Oh, yes, I love flesh. Every single person we take captive during a raid can be utilized. Women can be <clears throat> used until they can be used no more, and men can be either put to work or, if they're strong enough, pressed into service. All can serve. And they will serve or they'll die. Or they will serve and then they will die eventually. Yes. Focus on research. I mean, we already get 1.11 every single day. You know what? Let's, I'm going to do that one. We almost never do that research stuff. Does that affect what we have immediately or... Actually, how much manpower do we have stored up here? 10,000. We could do capital punishment. I, I want, we need another division. Mm. I hope we can get through this first. It's going to take basically three weeks. That's a lot. Struck at the early, the rate succeeds. Hey, look at that. Many of the brigade found the thought of attacking a prison ironic, yet they still approach it with a skill and determination that has made us all feared across the southern Urals. In the dead of night, infiltration specialists, former members of the Waffen SS, gained entry through the prison's sewer system and coordinated their assault with that from our main force outside, attacked from both within and without. The Yo Guard were quickly overwhelmed, and many being unable to even reach their weapons. Though we were victorious, it would appear that the Guard has planned for such a contingency, as their men advancing into the fortress found defensive positions abandoned and evidence of the existence of a number of escape routes. Escape routes that were used when it was clear we were winning. Though we subsequently inflicted far fewer casualties upon the guard than expected, we have secured both the base and the armory contained with him. We've also proven that even the guard's most powerful fortresses were not safe from us. Emphasizing this fact, Dovanga ordered the few prisoners taken, flayed, and hanged from the walls before we set the buildings alight and retreated with their captured spoils. We have proven our point, for now. The guard are not invincible. We get a lot more attrition. Division recovery rate, division attack goes, and defense goes... Oh my god! Way down! Oh my gosh, purge it. We gotta purge it. Yeah, we pur Yeah, oh my god. I hope we're not gonna fight anybody soon. Heavily favor the officers, that's fine. Oh, that's a... Oh man, that's a lot of... Mm. Disrespecting a Vel Veldanga. Gotta execute a lot of these people then. But, draw out the guard at every turn. Um, the Euro Guard frustrates our efforts. Organizing defenses, training villagers in a militia, and even striking at our camps in the night. If we're going to one day utterly destroy them and leave their lands open for plunder, we need to accept their first strength first. And the Maskerovka tactics we have recently learned can help here. A series of small raids should force them to commit their main forces to action, and when they do, we will be waiting. But winter attrition. As we prepare for the... as Prepare as we have, the Russian winners are perhaps our match in terms of the cruelty. So often, even the strongest and bravest of men can do nothing against a bitter cold and harsh landscape. Whilst we Germans are no undoubtedly superior to these Russians, we are not invulnerable or immune to these temperatures. So far, the cold has claimed the lives of 27 of our men, usually slipping away from us during the night. It is sobering to face our vulnerability and insignificance against these bitter feats of nature, yet we do know that once we are through it, it will prove, be proof yet again of why we are the toughest, meanest sons of guns these lands have ever seen. The cold cannot freeze pure Aryan blood and a new game. Oh, crud. The Dovanga Brigade tended to make rather heavily to the bottle. Most people were aware of this, none more so than the poor souls whose homes have been pillaged by an army of drunks armed with machine guns. Of course, this doesn't mean that the Brigade didn't enjoy what they did. On the contrary, many of them relished in the looting and raping of the Russian wastes. But there were other things they did to pass the time, much to the relief of the surrounding villages. We well, started with a German soldier coming up with an idea for a new drinking game, and the Russian contingent supplying vo stolen vodka became a great new tradition. It will be something repeated by the Brigade for a long time to come, and in later years, unscrupulous American college fraternities. The true nature of the game will be lost at time, but future renditions will generally agree that a live pigeon and an inkwell and an antel are all involved. Soon after that, on the first fateful night, the game, part of the celebration, quickly ended and dissolved into a wild, debaucherous party of the likes of which had not been seen in years. The raucous laughter could be heard for miles. Pass me a glass, I want to try this. Oh boy. 
Oh boy. There you go. They're still content for now, which is fine. Um, nah, that's not worth it. Joint training, yes. Request advisors, yes. Rifles, I mean, we got, we have more than enough rifles. I just want some artillery pieces for the love of God. And, oh, we have some manpower. Oh. Pillage of the land, that's not worth it. That's not worth it. Um, this one, I don't want to keep doing this because it keeps, I like it that they're well organized. And I don't mind random organ, uh, executions. But it's better, honestly, waiting to do the Purgy Officer Corps. Well, another can well, Officer Corps, Officer Corps will become content, but the other one uh, helps suppress stuff. So, just in case we get any sort of debuffs here, I'm going to just add another one here for now. This, these guys will never actually come out just because we don't have artillery. So, hmm. 12 combat with is okay. But they don't have artillery either, so. We'll see. Draw the guard. Followed up with what? The Battle of Novotoroitsk. Our gambit worked. The raids we conducted on the League's outlying villages have drawn them out, moving to erect defenses around the town at Novotoroitsk in anticipation of an engagement. But they still think they will only be fighting another raiding force and have deployed themselves accordingly. They have no idea what's coming. The guard have walked into a trap and it's now time to spring it. And it seems like a certain Mr. Adolf is going to, uh, well, make sure Germany craps a bed. Nothing else down here before the game starts lagging uncontrollably. They're now the content and slightly unorganized. <sighs> and here we go. The game is going to like super hard for the Germans of War, which is fine with me, but we still need another division. I guess we can make a militia division just in case, but militia divisions just not really that good. But draw out the guard. The Ural guard celebrated by peasants as heroes across the southern Urals. Even far beyond the League's borders are getting too full of themselves every time our men enter their territory. They arrive to stand against us, fighting with utter tenacity, but it's time to show the people that the guard are not invincible and that nobody can protect them from us. We will launch a series of raids into their lands in order to, if they want to keep their reputation of protection, and draw their cowardly garrisons out of their fortresses and into the open, where they will be vulnerable, to, of course, to attack. We will pick a time and place, and when they are right where we want them, we will strike from all sides and slaughter them to the last man. Surrender will not be offered or accepted, and when the people see the bodies left behind, they will know they are truly alone. Heroism has no place in these lands. Oh, good. Good. Now, it's not good that the guys here don't like us. They're unhappy. Ah, uh, man. Yeah. It's fine. Capital punishment. Uh, this is a soldier's organization, though. Yeah, that's a soldier's organization. So it doesn't even matter. We can't even make this. So I'm just going to keep storing the manpower in here for now. So I don't want to lose anything. Um, I'll just keep doing that stuff for now. There's just nothing here. Oh, there we go. Spread joy, yeah. The soldiers will be more happy, but... What are the other groups? Unhappy and slightly disorganized. Uh, the second phase. The Euro League's forces were smashed at Novotroitsk, drawn in by our deception, and this gives us an opportunity. The militias are depleted, their defensive lines breached, and their fortresses exposed. We will likely not see such momentary weakness again, and we must move to take advantage. Additional raids will be launched onto these fortresses to ensure their destruction, and other great raid approaches, and when it does, the League will not be able to interfere. Preparations for a new major raid against enemies. The bombing stop. If you want to about that, please go ahead. Dark, uh, clear skies, dark clouds. Very nice. They're unhappy. Well, how many more do we have to kill? Expansion into Africa. And the world is falling apart. Ah, another civil war. Ah, very good. Hidden heroes. Formation of Africa Shield. I wish we could spend... I wish we had the, the, you know, the economy button open so we can actually spend more money so we can get some better guys. Or get more guys and do stuff with them. There you go, do that stuff there. Ah, <sighs> slightly unorganized, Jesus Christ. Alright. And like normal, when Germany die Germany basically dies, everything falls apart. The second phase, yes please. The second great raid. Once more we should consider who should consider our next major raid against. The Battle of Novotroitsk. 
Despite all of our victories against the Euro League, its guard and other organizations, we have yet to secure a decisive victory, something that can give us the advantage on a large scale that changes now. The Brigade Scouts have reported that the Euro Guard have established a large concentration of forces around the industrial center of no Novotroitsk, no doubt in order to protect the extraction of rare and extremely valuable and composite ores that are located there. Ores that are no doubt critical to the League, both for their own military production and for trade to acquire that which they cannot make themselves. We must have this prize and similarly deny it to them. It'll be a bloody and difficult battle against some of the Euro League's best fighters, but the reward is worth it. Delvang himself believes it, and that is, in the end, what matters. We will prepare a plan, we will engage the guard, and once they fall, we will unleash ourselves onto Novotroitsk and take everything it has. Ready the men! Because we're always readying men. And. There you go. Alright. Lesson to the old god. Your all experience, the Battle of Novotroitsk, the outskirts. The Battle of Novotroitsk began as the formations approached it, covered by early morning fog, and began an artillery bombardment of the Euro Guard's outer positions. Given the importance of the battle, Dovang had authorized the use of heavy equipment and ammo. Reserves uh, not typically access, and thus a bombardment conducted in waves was one that we knew our enemies did not expect. By the time it ended, three hours later, it was clear that the defenders had been significantly weakened and then our men were sent in. The air defense works were quickly taken, but our push into the Novotroitsk suburbs was much more strongly resisted. With machine gun fire we were from a prepared position, slowing the advance. In the field himself, Delvanga ordered smoke screens deployed while flamethrower teams moved to successfully burn out the gun nests. Although it took several more hours to properly secure the rest of the outskirts, the outcome was inevitable, and the brigade's command post has been moved forward in anticipation of the next push and into the industrial districts ahead. This is shaping up to be a good day. Transfer flesh. As per agreement with Lysenko, we should prepare our prisoners for transport to the Black Mountain. Hand them over. A good friends means good money. We get 400 things of artillery. We need that already, man. But the deal changed. Pray we don't alter it further. Yes. Oh, but 800. Ooh. A second great raid. Rally the lads. Spread the spoils. Ooh, the officers won't like this, but the soldiers will be more content. I like that. Um, let's do lessons of the guard first. We secured much loot from the League's fortresses, but we also took prisoners. Though it would be it, we would usually hand them over to Lysenko or just dispose of them altogether, we should not forget how useful the training our men previously received was. We'll give them a very simple choice, teach us how the League trains and fights or die. Surely some of them will be willing to give us lessons, and then we can, and will, use those lessons against our former friends. You know, just to be sure. Unhappy still? Oh, uh, they're always unhappy. Um, we'll do that one, that's fine. Land auction is great too. The better of the choice, the industrial district. Um, this is really just not worth doing, is it? But we need manpower... Much less... Ah. The push into Novo Threat's industrial areas was critical, since the uh, brigade has often learned to its fury. The Euro Guard would sooner destroy what it possessed and allow us to claim them as their spoils. And so, our advance into the district was started as soon as our hold on the outskirts was cemented, capitalizing on the momentum possessed. Unfortunately, however, a quick victory was denied us, and brutal firing often at close quarters and sometimes in melee carried on throughout the afternoon and into the night. Alongside explosions that we know belong to the Guard sabotage teams, as the sun rose, though, on the next morning, Dilvanga, enraged at the loss of valuable plunder, ordered an all-out assault, leading to yet another long day of close quarter fighting. A day that, in the end, however, brought victory. The brigade has secured the district, but at great cost, with much left, much of it left in ruins. The victory is a victory, however, and must be capitalized on. The last area of Novotroitsk that must be taken is the town center, and we move to do so immediately. Uh, boys, had a blast. We're losing more and more men, which sucks, but that's why I already put these, the manpower into the reserves, basically, for now. This is why we need more artillery. Uh, melee fighting, you know... Normal gun battles, artillery is what you want to use to kill enemies, or just, you know, disease, but, you know, whatever. The town center. Operating from a position from both the suburbs and industrial zones, the brigade began its final push on Novo Threat's town center, intended to finally break the Euroguard's resistance alongside the sunrise. Using sniper and artillery fire, thank God, our forces frustra frustrated attempts by the guard to affect a civilian evacuation, ensuring future captives while also causing obstructions for the guard themselves. This distraction also allowed elements to advance closer than before under less fire, and thus when the final assault began, it did so from a superior tactical position. Despite this, however, the guard resisted fiercely in close quarters, room to room combat became the norm as we moved closer to the town hall itself. As ammo was expanded, rifles and submachine guns became clubs, and debris was turned into improvised weapons. Indeed, and in spite of the hopelessness of the guard's position, so determined was it defense that it took two further days to break. But break it did. With the final push, a shock element of our own stormed the guard's command post in the town hall and killed the officers with him. Organized defense collapsed shortly thereafter, and as the brigade's flag was unfolded above it, a great cheer rose. We have certainly earned this victory. Now it is time to enjoy it. Victory is ours! Break out the booze! Victory. The Battle of Nova Troitsk is over, and the Brigade has once again emerged victorious. As the last of the Euro Guard's positions were overrun, and those few foolish enough, foolish enough to attempt to surrender, 
They were shot where they stood. The aftermath began. Noble Thrusk may be a larger settlement than the brigade is used to sacking, containing far more people, but the procedure remains the same, and our men are very, very experienced at following it. Any civilians who had sighted or aided the guard were immediately shot, along with the families. The strongest of those who remained were concentrated together, ready for transport to forced labor camps, either in the town itself or in our other territories. Buildings were first ransacked for anything of value, and then burned down in order to send a message. <clears throat> and of course, women were abducted wholesale. And the town center, Dolvanga himself gave a jubilant speech on a balcony overlooking a bonfire into which the corpses of the Euro Guard were thrown. The valuables and the resources of the town will be a great boon to the brigade, and the boost is potentially an even greater reward. The guard should have stayed in their fortresses. Awesome, we actually get some bonus here because we actually could really use it. Holy crap. We could really use it. I just, I just want to keep an eye on this because as soon as we can get more, we can get more manpower, we will. But the second phase. We've been waiting for this day for a very long time indeed, my friends. The Euro's guards defeat at Noble Thrusk has left them, at least for the moment, scattered and disorganized, unable to mount effective defense or counterattack. As such, the lands they claim to protect, especially along the borders, are wide open for the brigade to pillage. And, ha <laughs> pillage we will. In addition to wealth, women, prisoners, and other items of value, Delvanga, all Oscar Delvanga, and his officers have issued specific orders to secure any and all military equipment found. We will eventually have to face that madman Lysenko, and the fortifications of the guard contain much, including heavy weaponry and artillery pieces that could help us when the day comes. In addition, the other supplies to be captured, especially foodstuffs from the many farms left equally unprotected, will allow us both to replenish our depleted stocks and establish a uh, strategic reserve. Oh, yes. A reserve that'll keep us going for some time. Things are looking up indeed. Take it all. Actually, this will save us manpower. We can actually make these guys instead uh, seven twos. We have more than enough army XP for that. That's not. That's really not a bad division. I do want to throw in some recon companies. Do we have enough? That is not bad. I'm looking for quality over quantity. So with Artie, uh, you know what? I'd rather do this one because this one because this costs twenty more. Um, Army XP anyways, even though it doesn't really, really matter too much. Um, just gonna throw 10 on here, and then 30 to get to where we're at here, or we just go over here and cost us, what, like 15 maybe? So, let's duplicate this, and we'll call it 7 slash 2's. Uh, 7 slash 2's should still be okay, right? I could be completely wrong. I could be messing this up right now super badly. You know what, you know what? Just in case, like I said earlier, let's save. It's always good to make a save, and we have 100% war support. That is nice. So, just in case, let's make these guys 7-2s. Saves manpower. We have enough arty for now that I think it should be okay. So, that should be okay. We'll still have 400 in reserve, which is nice. Right? Cool. Because we need to save, we need to save manpower. And we're actually going to convert these two to 7-2s. We don't have the manpower, which is fine. We'll get the manpower. We actually need more anti-tank and artillery. Okay, so wait, are we out of artillery? Oh, we're, well, we kind of have the arty already, so... Um, your leaks by capture. Uh oh! String him up! Kill the dude! Cut off his cock and shove it down his throat! Is that all? These were the cries echoing through the camp as the beaten and bloody form of our guest was dragged through the mud to the center of camp. <clears throat> we discovered him scurrying through our supplies like the rat he is and followed a thorough succession of torture. It was discovered that the man is in fact a spy for the Euro League. It's almost a compliment that they find the notion of fighting us daunting enough that they want to gauge our strength and supplies with subterfuge. We do like it when people pay us the proper respect after all, but. This is a step too far. Brought before all to see, the spy was tied to a pyre and set alight. His screams matched only by the howls of the wolves. We'll dump the body to the border and let it serve as a message. If they want to judge our strength, they can do it while they're while we're killing them. I spy with my little eye. A lot of people with big artillery weapons. So that's 200. Right now, what I want to use is not bad. 49 some organization. That's quite a bit less, but we I think it should be okay. 430 defense versus... Yeah, 530. Actually, that's a lot more defense. I don't know. It's, it's up in the air. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I just want a more soft attack, so. We have enough for now. Enough for now. We just need more anti-tank. The Algerian War. Very nice. Um, Go to two if you can. I mean, we probably won't be able to go up that high, but we'll see. Uh, Anything else? They're, they're still just so unhappy. Why? Why? We had 500 manpower right there. Why are the officers so unhappy? 
I don't know. You're all expertise, though. The Ural League captives, though smart enough to take us up on our offer, at least, have been very helpful. The lands of the Ural, or the League, are rugged and mountainous, and they've given us some useful instruction on how to best handle them. So useful, in fact, that some of the Brigade think they should be given an offer to stay and join us more permanently. They can always refuse, of course. It just means we need to dig a slightly bigger hole, and we like making holes here, so... Mm -hmm. Sure, infrastructure, why not? And... Thank you. And thank you. Heavily favor the officers? Well, they're going to be pissed off anyways. Jesus Christ, officers. The canal rights, very nice. Uh, let's see, Vasily Grishin is Mr. Authoritarian Democrat. We have Libertarian Socialism under Kuro Pat Patkin. And who is this fascist? Boris Zavoyko. All right, then. Your expertise followed up with homemade body armor. I like that. More defense? Yes, please. Well, there is one thing for certain that men have been asking for time and time again. It is body armor. Though we don't have the connections or resources to acquire a proper high-quality armor, we don't need to. Most of the weapons our enemies use are older and provided, and so we can provide the solution as well. We have lots of scrap metal flying around and from older plundered equipment, and we can use it to fashion sets of crude armor. It'll be good enough. If a bit strange looking, but it'll be more than good enough. Uh, they're actually... Lube be more distributed equally. We don't need to do that one, because we already have 100% war support, right? Hmm, I don't want to keep doing that one. Trainer troops, yes. Yes, 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 yes. A thousand times yes. Anything else? Research, yes. Now we're running out of political power. A note. God forgive me. I don't know who will find this. They took everything from me. My home, my people, my livelihood. My wife and children. God, Marie, I'm so sorry. I wish I could have done something if I was there. When it happened, it's too late for that now. I couldn't find all of them, little Misha. She's gone. I can't find her body anywhere. My youngest daughter. She's 11. I don't even want to think about if they took her, or why, or what they're doing to her now. There's nothing left for me here. The village is in flames. I read this from afar, watching my home burn, and all I've left is one gun and one bullet, and I know what I'm going to do with both. I hope the next life is nicer to me than this one. I'm sorry. Grigory Arbuzov. Memento Mori. But body armor. Body armor. Body armor can be very nice to have. Oh, there we go. We did it again. Uh, maybe save for some of it this time. Okay, now the content for now. Ungrateful people. Keep doing that. That's fine. Ural expertise. One of the bonus for land auction is actually really, really nice, but whatever. Rapid assault. I'm um, sure, why not? We're going to try to do as many focuses as possible. There's much to admire about wolves. They hunt in packs. They identify the best targets of opportunity. Targets that foolishly remove themselves from the larger herd. They move swiftly, achieve their goals, and then withdraw. Ready to repeat the procedure all over again? We should act in the same fashion, using our trucks to move rapidly, bring down our prey, and take what we want. Soon all will know the brigade is the wolves of the Urals. Hmm. Led by Big Daddy Oscar. Looking good so far. Anything else? No? Nope. We're looking pretty good. Except for the, the uh, of course, uh, organization of the group. But that's okay. Actually, oh, heavily. Yeah, do that one for now. Because we they we need more contentment. Distribute more equally. And I'll do it anyways because we can. Why not? Who cares? Uh, I love body armor. Transfer the flesh. I kind of want to do this one next. Deep in the west, penetrate the mountains. When you say penetration, I get a little excited, but a great second rave. With the Euro League humbled after the debacle at Novo Troitsk, it's time to plan another great raid, one that they won't be able to stop. There are many questions to answer first, however. Where to target? What type of loot to concentrate on? When to attack? What to do with the captives and at least once the men are done with them? We will have our fine answers, and an abundance of choice is something we could get used to. <sighs> Having choice it just feels so. Uh, we need more manpower anyways. Can I bribe them with something else? I, why can't we raid anymore, man? I just want to raid. Are you guys good enough yet? Jesus Christ. Is there a doctor in the house? Today has been a bountiful day indeed. While scouting out the lands of Orsk for any targets we might raid between our larger raids and our enemies, we have discovered an operational hospital which has been managed to escape our notice. Look at that. Until that is today. Here in the report, Dilvanga immediately ordered the raid and our boys descended. We faced only minor resistance from a civilian force which we overwhelmed... Uh, with ease. They went after the spoils in part of the world where medicine is difficult to come by. The medical supplies we have captured are worth their weight in gold and then some. Combined with the beautiful nurses we found and the few doctors we have pressed into service, that this has been a great day for the band. Any patients we found in the hospital have been executed and the building itself set ablaze. They will serve us or they will die. God, these officers. I, I don't like these officers. I'll be honest. Sorry, I said it. Give to the best? Of course. They just want to get paid off. Hmm. Ungrateful sex of garbage, man. How are we doing over here? We're looking actually not too bad, though. 
All right. And oh, officers are being angered. Well, they're always angered. Spread the spoils. Oh, well, we can. Where are we at for this one, though? First, though. Uh, oh, well, we'll do it anyways. They're pissed off. God, these people suck. Our raid was a great success, and we've come away with even more plunder than we thought. It's time to spread the wealth around, and maybe get this time we'll increase their share a bit. Give them a little more liquor, a few more pieces of gold, or one or two more women to use up, and free reign over some of the other prisoners and items. Some of our officers might be a little unhappy, but even if they have to know, they have to know that keeping the men happy is an important consideration. So if these guys get too unhappy, will they probably try to basically cool us or kill us? They might. I have no idea. How's this coming along? Two out of ten, huh? There we go. Alright, transfer the flesh after we do spread the spoils. And I do want to save because I want to make sure we do this well. Um, the pincer, huh? He who dares wins, surely? A second great raid. A victory breeds complacency, and this is no different for the brigade. Our men Hodden and Scott are getting bored of the small-scale raids we've made in recent days. Bored raiders are dangerous raiders. To both friend and foe, and the officers understand this very well. The decision has therefore been made to carry out a second great raid, and secure much new plunder. And just as before, there are three primary options for our officers to choose between. Orenburg, as always, is the great prize of the Urals, bloated with prisoners, wealth, and entertainment of all kinds. Our men speak of it always, often in hushed tones, and would jump at the chance to ride towards it once again. The second grasp of a group of targets lie in the hands of the Ural League. Though not as wealthy, no group in the region provokes more hatred from our men as the League uh, and its guard, and that thirst for revenge will no doubt motivate the Brigade to new heights of aggression and slaughter. And finally, by far the most ambitious as a third option, it has been proposed to strike Orenburg and the Euro League both. It would be difficult to put them out of the end at a great risk, but the reward both in loot and dread, a reputation and fame, would be enormous, and would weaken both our enemies besides. Excitement builds. Orenburg and the Euro League. These guys are really unhappy. I don't know if we'll be able to do that, I'll be honest. I don't know. I'm, 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 oh, we made a division. Oh, we still have one of you guys still here. Um, I'd rather just do this. Not bad. We gotta keep an eye on that though. Um, we're still okay on that stuff for now. A show of strength would be nice. Oh, at least seven divisions in there. It costs a thousand manpower. The most dangerous game. Oh boy. Morale has been going steady lately, but it can always be improved, and so Dovang has arranged for a contest to be held within the brigade. All the members are welcome to participate, but all who wish to partake are required to pay an entrance fee for a certain percentage of their spoil stashed. The winner will then take all of the spoils and put it into the pot, along with receiving a gift from Oscar Dovang himself. The game is simple. At dawn, a number of our slaves and prisoners will be set free and unknown to them, given a three hour head start. Then the contestants watch it loose, and the aim of the game is to return after 12 hours with as many heads as possible. The man with the most heads wins. The competition has been a great success, even if more heads did come back than we actually sent out. We should do this more often. Ah, yes. They're already pissed off anyway, so. I don't know, like, I don't want Oscar to die, like. Hmm. Things aren't getting much better here, are they? Hmm. Alright, so we did that one. Rally these guys. I don't really want to do this one. De wow! Defense goes down by 70%. Attack goes up by 60%. But Jesus Christ, look our wounds. You do get more manpower, but I don't transfer the flesh. Our raids in the Southern Urals, having expanded both in frequency and scale, have left us with many more captives than usual. We don't have the space or desire to hold on to them, and we certainly don't want to feed them. But as always, Lysenko always wants more, and so we'll move to hand them off to him. For proper compensation, of course. Let's see what we can pressure him for this time. And actually, just in case, I want to make a save, you know, just in, just because you never know what bad things happen. It's already made 1964. It's kind of crazy to me that's already 64. Uh, before we keep going, anything else here? I mean, I guess we could... Request raiding party movement, maybe? Military coup in Brazil? Well, another failed democracy. Typical. Um, nah. Sure, why not? Land auction, sure, why not? Because even it's, it's going to go down. The contentment is still going to go down no matter what, so. Do you get coup if you have less stability over here? Or not? I don't know. And I don't know which one we should do. Hand them over. Stick to original agreement with the last for now. Or good friends means good money. The deal has changed into upping our payday, has backed down and agreed to our demands. Will that bite us in the butt? Because we got still got a lot of things down here. Uh, I don't know. We could use a lot of that artillery and support equipment. Uh, do we have any anti-tank here? Um, 
Hmm, I don't know. I really don't know. Here we go. Train our troops. Focus on research. Get more infrastructure. This looks so bad, man. <sighs> transfer the flesh. And transfer the flesh. The deal between the brigade and Lysenko is that it's course simple. We hand over as many prisoners as possible and capture in our many raids as either a primary objective or a, a side spoil for whatever insane experimentations he has planned for them in return. He transfers a share of advanced military equipment and other technological wonders of the Black Mountain to our forces. Though one cannot claim that all of our men are honest, they are con mostly content with this arrangement. Some, however, complain. And now without cause, they claim that we are doing all the work and take taking all the losses. Wiley Lysenko sits up in his mountain in safety with his secrets. They say that we deserve a bigger piece of the pie, and that it would be easy to impress this desire upon him, and despite the risk to the deal as the whole thing could bring. Some of our officers are starting to listen. Should we encourage this? Decisions, decisions, and I apologize once again. Just, I want to make sure that whenever I go do this, I want to make sure we can do this as fast as possible. So, we're going to attempt going as hard and as big as possible with the deal change. The last time we arranged a major deal with Lysenko, we weren't powerful enough to strong arm him. That is no longer the case. We have more men than him. We have more experience than him. And after all of our previous deals, it's very possible that we now have more equipment than him as well. It's time to make this difference in position clear. He can give more. We'll tell him that much. Tell him as much. And he better do so. Um, does this hurt anything here? Not really, no. Steroids, peace. How strong is this group over here? Lysenko's... We could probably do pretty darn well with them, so the deal's changed. Hopefully, pray, we pray don't, we don't alter the fur, fall, uh, alter further. Excellent news, Lysenko's realized that he was in no position to bargain with the brigade, and he's back down like the coward we know he is. Already shipments of equipment, much more than we might have received otherwise, approach our depots outside Orsk. Our men are excited and extreme to get their hands on them. They replace both old and worn-out weapons and to equip their newest recruits as well. We've already begun planning more raids to make use of them. Whoever said intimidation can work wonders. Ah, frozen in t t another division! Frozen in time! As the winter continues, we've come across the most fascinating sight. Buried within the snow and ice, we've discovered a small detachment of T-26 tanks and the frozen skeletal remains of a number of Soviet soldiers. We suspect they must have been on their way to the front during the German invasion of the Soviet Union all those years ago, only to be claimed by the freezing temperatures before they could arrive. It is a beautiful, though haunting sight, a reminder of those of who we once were and how far we have come since. The equipment is beyond repair, and so we must leave it, but the reminder that men are not the only enemy we face out here will stick in our minds for some time. We shall not suffer the same fate. Sorry, right, those, those, can you hear my shorts? I'm rustling my shorts. That's weird. What is this one? Prepare for the final battle. I'll spread joy? Yeah. It's fine. We love to spread joy. Actually, just in case. Uh, do it up here. Given... Please give in, for the love of God. Give in, give in, give in, give in, give in, give in, give in. I'm kind of tempted to lower our war spread to get more, um, look, well, get more stability, I guess. Finally, we got the first thing done for our land auction. Thank God. I like to do offensive, but prepared readouts are much better. Look how long this, oh, 170 is not bad. Yeah, for some reason, it took so long to get this one done. The deal changed. All I think was undeniably a pretty weird guy. He rarely seems to leave his laboratory. He's more of a cowering creature than a man. He never deals with anyone from from our side other than Dilvanga himself, always sending one of his equally weird assistants to oversee the transactions between us today. As our slave master arrived at Black Mountain with the latest hall of captives, it was business as usual. That was the case, at least until one of the scientists remarked how impressive they, impressed they were with the number of specimens they were providing. To which our man replied it was easy when we have as many men as we do, ready to fight anywhere and anyone at a moment's notice. <clears throat> Worried by the possible implication, Lysenko's lackeys tried to wrap the deal up quickly, but with Dilvanga's authorization, our man informed them that the deal had changed, we have been taking the risk, so that we want more than previously negotiated amount. The or else was not said, but clearly implied. Lysenko's assistant has retreated, claiming that the man can only be accepted or denied by the mad sentence himself. Brains versus Brown, it seems, and... Come on! Come on! Come on! He agrees. Our man at Black Mountain has sent back word that Lysenko surrendered to our demands for an increased payment to the captives we are delivering. We get the impression that he is by no means pleased by our sudden change of heart, but we don't really care if he likes it or not. All that matters is that the madman caved like the cowardly creature he is, and extra supplies will reach our boys from now on. Slavery is a lucrative business. Also, if you want to read about this one, put your head as well as good friends means good money. 
Rally the lads over. We're going to raid. We need to get the men pumped up. We'll tell the officers to promise them whatever they want. Money, women, liquor, blood, anything. Whether they get it or not is up to them, up to how aggressive, violent, and perceptive they are. And, of course, once they do find any such items, they'll have to put them in inventory to be just properly distributed first. But they'll get their share, and the share they do deserve. I can't believe it actually worked. I think I actually played this oh, in open riot. What the heck? Are you kidding me? This sucks. Wow, that's really bad. But, uh, hopefully they don't try to coup us. I can't believe we have eight divisions. Holy crap. That's not good, man. Uh. Give it one day to do this first, and then we'll do that one. Alright. Uh. I mean, it's probably bad to do, but whatever. Gods of the North. I don't mind doing capital punishment. Can we actually... We have no manpower. <laughs> oh, boy. Rally the lads. And liquor wounds. Our raids were successful, but that doesn't mean they were without cost. Men were lost, as they always are. Equipment was worn out, caps abandoned, and the like. We're going to be going out again soon, of course, but only a full act without preparation. So we'll take a few break. We'll rest, repair, and identify new targets. And then we'll head right back out again. As we should. This is not good for us, man. A show of strength. Yeah, it's just not. None of this is worth it. Just none of it is worth it. This stuff is worth it, though. Infrastructure getting more manpower. Um, yeah. Well, mm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll definitely see. Still get 1.3 political power every day, which is pretty nice. This has me a little worried, I'll be honest. The unknown soldier, Yorg, was the epitome of a man of the Dovanga Brigade. Brutal, slovenly, and lacking in any virtuous qualities whatsoever, including patience. So when he and four of his companions began lagging behind the rest of the raiding parties, their fifth, the Kazakh raider, Erstat, stopped to relieve himself. He threatened to cut the man's genitals straight from his body if he didn't hurry up, and it was then that, that they saw him. On the long grass about 50 meters away was one of those goody-two-shoes zero guards, watching the party and presumably counting their numbers to report back. Seeing that he had been spotted, the nameless soldier quickly but calmly sprung from his position and began to retreat over the ridge behind him. Udo, a man who was supremely violent as he was mentally addled by the years of substance abuse, roared with delight at the prospect of an easy kill and gave chase. Not wishing to be left out of the blood sport, Jorg and the rest speedily followed. The hunt was on. The men were eager and their weapons were quickly drawn, and the soldier's, soldier was surprisingly agile as he ducked and weaved amongst the rocks and villages and trees. Numerous shots were fired, but none of them managed to connect, prompting Ralph to stupidly attempt to throw his empty gun at the target to no effect. Eventually, the chase led them to an abandoned Soviet military compound. Gunta and Mach were almost able to seize their prey at the gatehouse, but with alarming dexterity, the soldier sprang up and over the locked gate and soon vanished into the mess of the building. Where did the dude go? That is not good. Lick our wounds deep in the west. Um. To us, as Orenburg. We technically already did the Euro League. I kind of do the Euro League again. Pinch of the Mountains. The Pincer. Oh, we'll do it at the same time. Jesus Christ. But if we win, if we defeat and scatter the forces both, we'll have more plunder, all of kinds, and then we'll know what to do with, knowing that we'll strike fear into the, all of the Southern Euros. The Brigade cannot be stopped, and we'll prove it. Once again, we're looking at the lands of the Euro League for next raid. They still haven't fully recovered from the defeat at Novo Troitsk, but they still oppose us at every turn. They remain our most formidable enemies, but the air strength that they once possessed has dissipated considerably. We'll hit them again while they're still down and carry away whatever they have left, and we'll prove to the people of the Southern Euros that the League can't protect them from us. Deep in the West, to the West lies Oemberg, a perfect target. Their defenses are chaotic and uncoordinated. Their mil militias are not nearly as effective as those of the Euro League, but in their settlements have laden with loot all right for harvest. With so many factors in our favor, why wouldn't we target them next? We will prepare our raiding party immediately. Time to ride. All right, so let's keep doing this stuff. This seems pretty good to do. Uh, just gives me more soft attack, and I love that soft attack. Look at that. 500 some days, but splitting the party, glancing back at where they'd come from, the men soon realized that they had well, truly lost the rest of the raiders. Delvango was sure to have their hides if they showed up later as more deserters, as mere deserters, but perhaps if they could bring him a li live, living captive soldier from the most hated enemy as his newest plaything, the boss's temper could be sated, maybe? Yog managed to locate a gap in the rotting fence where the group made their entry. Emerging into the small field alongside some old barracks, they soon realized that they were in a rather extensive compound. Their target could be anywhere, and if they were not careful, he could simply, simply slip past them and wander out the way they came. Ralph had then the idea to split up and fan out across the compound. The sooner they could locate him, the sooner they could all converge and beat the daylights out of him after all. The men agreed, which is stupid. Yorg, Mach, and Ralph agreed to search the barracks while Gunter took Udo to investigate the admin, bu admin building. When Astot moved to follow them, Yorg shoved him back and had him guard the gate to make sure they didn't quarry 
their quarry didn't get out that way. If you did try to get again, they would easily be able to find him by the sound of the Kazakh screams. The role is a sign that the three groups split up to hunt for the nameless soldier. Now one of them noticed a soldier in shadow peering down at them from the old watchtower. Through the narrow slit of his visor, he observed the group diverging, noting their paths and memorizing the layout of the base from above. Planning the choke points, identifying ambush spots, plotting a most grisly end for each of them. Come out, come out wherever you are. Yeah, splitting up in a situation like that is really dumb. Really dumb. Death from above. Ustat burned with the fury as Yorg and the others departed. His time with the brigade had been full of bloodthirsty carnage and unspeakable pleasures, yet he internally resented the Germans in their smug sense of superiority over him and the other Kazakhs. He almost considered leaving them to their wild goose chase and running away. Nobody need he ever been associated with the bandits. He could head south and take up residence with whoever controlled Kazakhstan these days. Of course, Assad was a coward who clung to the brigade because he would rather be with them than against them. And so he did what he was told, as always. Suddenly his attention was caught by the creaking of wood. Spinning to the source, he saw a dark figure quickly disappear into the small tool shed, the door falling shut behind it. At last, a chance to prove himself. Astot charged to the shed, preparing to overpower the soldier and present his quarry to those haughty Germans. Busting through the door, he realized his saber ready to strike, and the shed was empty. There were no windows, and aside from a few piles of old tools, there was nothing, nowhere to hide. Astot gazed in furious disbelief at the space. He humiliated his own foolishness and began to consider the Germans at a point. It was at that moment he had the strange inclination to look up. There, held by all four limbs against the walls of the shed, was that infernal soldier, his masked face staring blankly down at him from above. That would be the last thing Assad ever saw as a figure plunged down and shoved a dagger through his skull. Aye. Hmm. A long fall. As he climbed the narrow stairway, Gunter pondered on how it was all possible for him to hate Udo at this moment any more than he usually did. In this confined space, the unwashed bandit's stench was unbearable. He was now useless in his search, the brain addled fool being more content to smash random bits of furniture. Gunter half considered finally killing him and blaming it on the soldier. If Udo was not so freakishly and brutally strong that he might tear him, tear him into two. As they searched the upper floor, Gunther glanced out of the window and scanned the camp. It was then he noticed Estat was no longer at the gate. His foul mood deepened as he made a mental note to relieve the useless Kazakh of several teeth once they were grouped. It was then of his ears caught the ever so subtle cracking and splintering of wood from the stairwell. His dash to investigate was interrupted, however, as he almost tripped over the knelt down form of Udo giggling over some leftover nude photographs. <laughs> Just before he finally snapped in the brain, the idiot, his eyes darted to the stairwell and locked directly with the unknown soldier, staring at him with no visible motion. The two bandits almost simultaneously darted for him, but they would never reach him. With a sudden snap, the floor beneath gave them beneath them gave way, and the two plunged down to the first floor. The impact was so great they broke through this floor as well, landing in a heap on the ground floor. Gunter screamed, screamed out in pain, his arm and leg broken in multiple places. Udo lay spasming, a huge splinter of wood penetrating his brain. As Gunter cried out for help, the soldier descended the stairs, tossing aside the saw he had used to weaken the boards. His gun out of reach, Gunter could do not but watch as the soldier forced a splinter deeper into Udo's skull with his foot before taking a shovel and smacking it repeatedly over Gunter's head. No way, we can die. <laughs> That's why you don't want to split up. Down the drain. The three other bandits searched through the various barracks house, overturning old beds and tearing them open dusty cabinets looking for the charge. As Rolf scoured the various buildings, he came across a number of old facilities, including the mess hall and the communal showers. As he wondered curiously whether the showers still worked, the terrible sound of guttural screams and a distant thwack, thwack, thwack of a shovel echoed from across the base. Jorg and Mark raced off to investigate the sound, but Rolf felt satisfied that they could handle it. It was just one soldier, after all. What harm could he do versus the wolves of Germany? Entering the dank and musty shower, shower quarters, he tried each shower in turn. Disappointment built as each one they failed to produce its promised stream until one finally of them miraculously had a small amount of cold water left in his tank. The chicle was meager and very cold, but for a bandit so dirty with filth and stain of its sins, it was a refreshing relief. As Rawls washed the water over his face and down his arms, he was blissfully unaware of the figure slowly creeping behind him. Too late did he catch a sight of a shadow on the wall, cast by the light through the entry doorway. The shadow of a blade raised to strike, he spun around just in time for the blade to plunge into his chest. The ceaseless masked figure raised his blade and plunged it down again and again and again. Rawls screamed in agony, his feeble resistance growing weaker and weaker with each blow. He finally slumped on down to the ground, life ebbing away. Rolf watched as the figure calmly turned to the macaw seen and walked out the door. As the last trickle of blood left his body, the final dregs of water carried it all the way down the drain. Get away from me, you psycho. <laughs> Arg. Psycho. Oh, psycho. An axe to grind. Mock roared with fear at the sight of the tenderized bodies of their compatriots. He no longer cared whether he brought their prey back to camp alive or in bloody chunks. For a Slav to be so stubborn and refused to surrender to superior German warriors was the gravest insult he could imagine. He pictured himself catching the wretch and laughing as he begged for him, begged him for mercy. As Yorg began to formulate a plan, another horrible scream rang out from where they had just come from. Determined this time to catch the dude, Mock sprinted from the building, Yorg struggling to keep up behind him. They raced outside across the open grass, hoping that a direct and rapid assault would enable them 
them to overwhelm their foe. Without a warning, a gunshot rang out from behind one of the barracks, the bullet screaming nearly above Yorg's head and slamming into the grass. Cut out in the open, the two desperately ducked for cover behind the barracks as Yorg returned fire with his Luger. However, Mark was not quick enough as a bullet slammed into his leg and sent him tumbling to the ground, as Mark screamed in pain. Yorg turned just in time to see the soldier emerging and striding with unnatural confidence towards them. He pulled his Luger up to fire but cursed as the empty gun merely clicked in his hands. Following back behind the nearest building, he began to reload, only to realize that he had left his extra ammo with a raiding party supply. Mark reeled on the floor as a figure approached. Lying his rifle to the side, he took a sharp axe from his belt and prepared to swing. His pathetic pleas for mercy were not enough to stop the axe from tearing into his chest, arm, face, please, no, please. <laughs> and the hunter and the hunted. With his companion Butcher before his eyes and his ammo all spent, York stood frozen, experiencing a feeling he had not had for a very long time. Fear. The figure with gore from Mark's mutilated body now kicking the front of his visor slowly turned its gaze upwards to face him. A moment of stillness slops, neither making a move. The soldier charged Yorg ran in utter terror. As he fled for his life, ax wielding maniac in hot pursuit, he passed the shower building and caught a glimpse of Rolf's bloody corpse. The chase would also lead him past the shed where Erstat had met his bitter end. Yorg soon realized the true peril of the situation he was in. A, a pack of six men had hunted one, one lone wolf, but now only he remained, and the hunter had become the hunted. Uh, approaching the fence where they entered, he cried out with horror as he saw that his pursuer had even given the darnable foresight to block that off. This was no man but a calculating demon, or more probably an angel, sent to punish him for his sins. With nowhere left to go, he ran for an old vehicle depot where a few broken trucks still sat parked, and tried to lose his pursuer in the obstructions. Where are you? That was Jekyll. Nice. And a last stand. As he crouched behind the old transport vehicle, Yorg tried desperately not to breathe. He could hear the unknown soldier's footsteps pacing methodically and purposefully around each remaining truck, looking for his quarry. He scanned the place desperately for any sort of thing to help him, when he spotted an old iron tire tire iron lying beneath his hiding space. Taking it gently in his hands, he crept slowly around the back of the truck, hoping to catch his pursuer by surprise. He waited carefully until his pursuer had passed before he steeled himself. Holding his weapon tightly, he swung wildly around the truck, and there was nobody there. A moment's confusion was all that he had before the whooshing of air behind him. Yorg ducked just in time for the axe blade to miss him by inches, slamming into the window of the truck into a crash. Uh, he spun around and slammed his tire iron into the side of the enemy's head. He forgot, of course, that his opponent was wearing the thick vis visored helmet of the guard. The only reaction from the soldiers was a mild grin of surprise and amusement even. Casting aside his axe, the soldier grabbed Yorg by the neck and began squeezing. Choking for air, he slammed his weapon fiercely around, hoping to strike some sensitive point. For a brief moment, he could see the soldier's eyes through the visor and saw for the first time the burning, malignant, malignant hatred. With a sweep of his leg, he was able to knock the soldier off balance, sending them both tumbling to the ground, both now bereft of weapons. They resorted to desperate fistfights, each slamming the other with all their might. They tossed and threw each other around, each becoming drenched in blood, and in the end, only one man would remain standing. Die, Don, you die. Uh, this I love the writing of this. So actually, one of the I, apparently supposedly one of the devs who wrote all this stuff, he commented in the last video. So like, if you're still watching, man, this is great stuff. Ah, uh, final message. When Oscar Del Dunga woke the next day, his subordinates would report several members from the latest raiding party unaccounted for. Probably deserters. He would vow to have them slaughtered if they ever returned, and that would be that. The day would go on. Del Dunga would continue to live his sinful life, and eventually he would go back to sleep. When he woke the day after, he would leave his tent to a great commotion. His men would lead him out of the camp to a macabre scene. Six wooden spikes impaled on the ends of each would be the head of the missing men. One with a dagger driven through his head, one with a stake of wood lodged in his brain, one whose skull had been cracked open and one surprisingly clean, and one filthy with his own gore, and one that was beaten, crushed, and broken beyond all recognition. Delvanga would ponder the scene for a moment, then he would shrug and order everyone back to their business. He would continue to live his sinful life, and eventually he would go back to sleep. The heads would remain on the spikes, standing silent vigil over the camp the next day, and the next, and the next, until the remaining flesh slowly sloughed away. In the distance, an unknown soldier would watch the camp. He would watch Dovanga give little heed to the warning, and he would know that when the only way he would ever get the message is if every last member of this horde of nightmares was hunted to, to a man. Just another day in Russia, though, but, uh, ooh. Ooh, which one should we do? I'm feeling we should do the pincer. And, obviously, with me saving and reloading games, I, we could probably do that, so. I do want to see if there's anything here. We'll get a little bit more manpower, hopefully, and try to make sure the, bra the guys are not too pissed off at us. But, uh, let's see if there's anything here first. Oh, someone's getting raided. Look at that. Give it a few days to see if there's any sort of event. Probably not. But if not, hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. As we will attempt our best to destroy everyone who stands in open defiance against us. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.